Are you looking for an inexpensive solution to emergency water disinfection? You're going to love this. Hey, Provident Preppers, I'm Jonathan. And I'm Kylene. And today we want to introduce you to something called calcium hypochlorite. And this is great for household disinfection and emergency water disinfection. Now there's a difference between water disinfection and water purification. When you're disinfecting water, you're just killing the biological creatures that are in there, the virus, the bacteria, and sometimes the protozoa. This doesn't do protozoa as well, and we'll talk about that another time. Purification, you're removing the chemicals, and one of the chemicals that you remove is something like chlorine that's in calcium hypochlorite. When you purchase it, you want to make sure that you're getting calcium hypochlorite that is 68% with only the other ingredients need to be like inert salts and it'll just say other. But if it's got other chemicals listed in here, you don't want to use it. This is also known as pool shock, but not all pool shocks are good for, for emergency water disinfection. So make sure that you get the right kind. Now today we're going to show you how we use it. A 55 gallon drum you're going to only use a quarter teaspoon of these granules to disinfect. So you can see this is really powerful stuff. You just put that in the 55 gallon drum. You want to agitate it somehow and you want to put the cap back on and then you just leave it alone and let it work its magic. A lot of times for water disinfection, we use regular Clorox bleach, not the splashless or the scented kind, just regular Clorox bleach. For emergency water disinfection, what we're gonna do is we are going to create a stock solution that is like the bleach. We are not going to drink this, we're going to use this to disinfect water. So what I have here is one cup of water and this is my calcium hypochlorite. Now, if you look on here, I've got this really nice label and if you go to, I'll leave a link in the description of the video to a um, post that we did all about cal calcium hypochlorite and it actually has this that you can print it out. So what we want, this is a half of a teaspoon. We're gonna do one and a half teaspoons in one cup of water and we're gonna stir it. It takes a little while for all of the granules to dissolve, but then what we have is we've got a bleach solution. This is 5% chlorine. When usually when we're making it up at home, all I do is I take, I take the, I've marked this, right? And we have a little funnel that we put on here. We put eight tablespoons of calcium hypochlorite in here, and then we fill it up to the, to the eight tablespoon mark um, with water. And then I'll just put the lid on, swish it around, and then I have a whole jug of calcium hypochlorite that I don't use it for disinfecting water every day, but I absolutely use it for laundry. And that helps me to keep this fresh, right? It's a great disinfectant for surfaces and things like that, just like you would use at the same ratio as you would use the sodium hypochlorite in the regular household bleach. Now we're going to have a discussion with Jay Wimpy, who is the president of the American Civil Defense Association and is a chemical engineer, so he knows the chemistry of these kinds of things. He's going to help us a little bit understand what it is, its capabilities, and some cautions. We now want to introduce you to Jay Wimpy. Some of you know him from previous programs he's been on. He is a prepper extraordinaire. He has spent a tremendous amount of time becoming an expert in many areas, and he is a chemical engineer, which uh, chemistry never fit well with me. I was more on the civil side, so he understands the chemistry of things like calcium hypochlorite and other important things in our prepping world. So let's talk to Jay. So Jay, I am, I am thrilled to be able to ask you some of this. Now, calcium hypochlorite, it's really good because it's powdered, where, where regular chlorine bleach is actually sodium hypochlorite, correct? Correct. So regular chlorine bleach is sodium hypochlorite, and that only has like a shelf life of six months, and it gets weaker and weaker as it sits on the shelf. So if you've had it on your shelf for three years, and you're trying to use it to disinfect water, it's not going to work as well as if it were fresh. But calcium hypochlorite is cool because it's in a powdered state, which enables it to last longer. So help me understand, Jay, how long can hy calcium hypochlorite 
actually be viable on the shelf? It should be able to be viable uh, indefinitely. Chemically, it should be very stable, you know, especially if you keep it relatively cool, if you can keep this in the basement, you know, a plastic bucket with a plastic lid, and that, that will tend to contain it. Uh, you will smell chlorine once you open the, the package. You know, you're only using this uh, maybe a half a teaspoon at a time. Uh, and so it's good to try and seal it up the best you can once you have to open one of these pouches. There are lots of cautions on the back of this uh, package. And uh, because this stuff is so concentrated, it is dangerous. And so you need to handle it very carefully. Try not to get any dusting powder around. It probably wouldn't be a bad idea to uh, put on some um, rubber gloves of some sort, you know, some either the nitrile or the latex gloves as you're handling it. Uh, be sure and use a plastic spoon uh, if you're spooning out a, a half a teaspoon or something of that nature. And then just be very careful to rinse uh, every, all, all the things that you've used to, uh, to handle the powder when you get done. Okay, Jay, so there are some other powdered chlorines beside calcium hypochlorite out there. What do you think of those? You know, we're, we're just used to the sodium hypochlorite and it's all sodium hypochlorite is is sodium oxygen and chlorine. And there, there's not a lot to, you know, get into trouble there, I guess, uh, from a chemical and toxicity standpoint. And I like calcium hypochlorite uh, roughly for the same reason. It's just calcium oxygen and chlorine, and it tends to, you know, give off free chlorine that uh, will react with the bugs and kill them. And so that's uh, that's why we like it. Most of the, these dry chlorine uh, materials, the, they provide about 60% of their weight in chlorine. And, and so they could probably be used interchangeably. Well, if you treat the water and it's got a little chlorine smell, that means there's enough chlorine there to do the job. And then if you just leave the water open for a little while, most of the chlorine will dissipate, but the bugs will be dead. However, it is best to leave the chlorine in the water for roughly a week because that kills all the different organisms and it'll do a really good job on most anything. And then let the chlorine dissipate and then you can consume the water. One other question, Jay. So calcium hypochlorite, just like with any other kind of chlorine, whether it's sodium or whatever, it doesn't tend to be able to effectively kill the um, protozoa. It's kind of like cryptosporidium. What do you think about that? Most sewer plants and most water treatment plants that are producing water for uh, people to drink use filtration and then they use uh, one of these uh, chlorine containing compounds uh, for disinfection. For uh, uh, time for disinfection with uh, a 1 ppm sol solution of, uh, of chlorine, for E. coli, it's one minute. For hepatitis A virus, it was 15 minutes. For Giardia, uh, it was 45 minutes. But for Cryptosporidium, it took seven days. I think the key is giving the chlorine time to work. If you use the industrial filter bags that we talked about, uh, cryptosporidium tends to be a little bit larger and therefore can actually be largely removed by filtration uh, with the um, actual backup plan of, of being able to kill it with uh, several weeks in, in contact with uh, over 1 ppm of active chlorine. Thank you so much, Jay. Yeah, super, thank you. Super appreciate you. Thank you, Jay, for that really valuable information. So I'm gonna share with you some really scary stories. However, we're, uh, right after that, we're gonna talk about how to safely store it because it's very valuable. The reason why it's so corrosive and everything is, is, and powerful is what makes it valuable in our storage. It's kind of like propane, right? Propane is a very dangerous fuel, but if you know how to store it and use it correctly, it's highly valuable. So that's kind of what we're talking about. So first of all, we have some very dear friends who are amazing preppers, and they created these three plastic totes. Um, each one of them had a brand new Aqua Rain water filter that was still in the cardboard with the plastic on it and everything. Then it had a little, like a, they put it in a Metamucil bottle. So a plastic bottle inside a plastic bag, and it actually wasn't calcium hypochlorite. It was another one of the pool shot kind of chemicals that you can use for water disinfection, and I can't remember which one it was. So they made these three totes exactly the same, and they put them on the shelf because they're great preppers and they were gonna be ready. Well, a few years later, when they went to check their water totes, they found that the aqua rain filters were completely corroded. You can see that the metal is rusted and split, and it was a tragedy, super expensive because this is highly corrosive to metal. So you do not want to put it in an enclosed space with metal. 
Another example comes from Melvin and Patty. They are some of our viewers who are wonderful to send us these pictures. So what they did is they bought the calcium hypochlorite in a box just like this. And then they put it downstairs a few feet away from a commercial um, refrigerator freezer that they had that hadn't been turned on in, in a while. But if you look at the bottom, it totally corroded the, the bottom of the freezer. In addition, when um, Melvin t went to pick up a bag and touch it, it actually started to kind of burn his hands a little bit. And you can see that the bags are deteriorating and that all of the um, ink is kind of smeared and, and messy. So that's a great example of what not to do. We don't want to store it like that. We've totally experienced some of the corrosive stuff, especially at the beginning too. We did some experiments about a year ago. This one has the bags of calcium hypochlorite not in a jar and that one has the jar. Talk to us about the difference in those bags. This one's kind of puffy, and I don't know if that's just because there's three tubes of it in there, or if something's happening in there that's causing that to puff up a little bit. Um, this one is just, you can fill the jar, and it's, it's not as puffy. So we'll find out what's going on here. Okay, so while he opens those, I'll tell you about how I usually store it. This is one and a half pounds, so one and a half bags of the calcium hypochlorite. And I like to put a, a plastic lid on it because remember if I put a metal lid on it, it's going to be corrosive, but the plastic is, is just fine. And then I tape all of the instructions on here so we know exactly what it is, how much to use, both to disinfect water and to make the stock solution. I just feel like it's a really good thing to have that taped on. Now I would actually, in the future, because we see how it leaks out of these, I would go for a, a tougher lid than what, this is the less expensive ones. These are significantly more expensive that are used for canning. I'd do that. Jay talked about taking the bags and putting the bags inside of a plastic bucket and sealing them. So let's look at what we have here. We've got a jar. It, it does smell really strong. And I had put, this in because one time I tried putting the bag in the jar without dumping it and the plastic all corroded and kind of shredded apart. And I didn't want that to happen, but I wanted to see what would happen inside that container. So this looks intact. That looks just fine, but look inside this bag. So can you see how it's already started to kind of degrade the Mylar bag? It's definitely starting to corrode the inside of that. But other than that, we didn't have any problems in the storage room where we kept this. So I think this was good at helping to contain it. Now this is just three bags like this. Almost feels like the, uh, the bag is, the mylar is starting to disintegrate a little bit. Now, let's see what we've, we've got the strong smell again. Okay, that kind of burned my lungs a little bit. I probably have, should have had a mask on to do this. Normally I don't wear a mask with this because I'm just dealing with this small amount. And when I take it out and I'm making my stock solution, I don't have that kind of a reaction. I think it's because this was all in this enclosed bag. We have the same- Some kind of degradation, degradation going, going on, on on the inside. They're totally off gassing, which means that if we're storing this by anything that's metal, it's going to corrode. So be super careful the way that you store it. I'm a huge fan of storing it like this. I think the glass jars are the way to go. And then I would even put the glass jars in a bucket because you do get a little bit of exfiltration out of either through the cap or through the seal. I'm guessing through the seal more than the cap, but another layer, putting them in there and packaging them so that they aren't going to bump into each other, break or whatever. Uh, I think is a, is a great idea. And I just thought about this right after this experiment because I think the Mylar was pretty effective and I know that the, these lids don't completely um, protect. So I wonder if we put a Mylar bag in here and then we put the, these jars, they're, they're great because they're ready to go. You can just pull one out and then we put the jars inside of the Mylar bag and that you could fit three in this little tiny one gallon bucket, right? and then we put a little cushion something in there and then put the lid on. I think, I'm thinking that would be nice and safe. Now, we highly discourage you from getting a five gallon bucket that you can buy at a pool supply place and storing it like that. That is not good, this is dangerous. 
I, I wouldn't do that. But small amounts like this, the, and the reason, you probably really only need one for your family, but we have one, and then we're preppers, so we have a backup, and then we have one to share. Yeah. I think that's kind of the way that we like to operate. So calcium hypochlorite, fabulous resource, dangerous. Be careful where you store it and how you store it. And one of the biggest reasons why it's so important is because this has a six month shelf life, remember? But this, according to Jay Wimpy, has an indefinite shelf life. I target 10 years, but wow, if you can have a way to disinfect your water that will, is shelf stable, that's, that's a huge asset. I would strongly, strongly encourage you to buy some, to store it safely if that's something that you're comfortable. And use precautions. <clears throat> if you put them in a bag like this, wear a mask when you open the bag. I should have done that. Now for the question of the day. What mishaps have you had in storing whatever it is, whether it's this kind of stuff or other things, things that you've learned from, share with us. And thanks for being part of the solution.